Hello and welcome to a very special program we call The Big Comeback. Indeed, it is a big comeback for leading football leagues with multiple title chases at stake. And as you know, the Bundesliga is already in session. The Bavarians, Bayern Munich, could be champions again anytime soon. And in Spain, the La Liga returns this week to see through the rest of the season. Of course, the English Premier League is making a grand comeback on June 17. And then three days later from that, um, June 20, it is the Catanasio all over again in the Serie A. More leagues are expected to return as well, shaking off weeks and months of inactivity due to the coronavirus pandemic. Welcome, my name is Juliet Bewan. Tonight, I am joined by five people whose professional careers are directly impacted by the wave of returns we are seeing. And um, in the next 30 minutes, we will be looking at the big talking point around gradual um, return of football. Joining me from North America, precisely the United States of America, is the team captain for MLS side Columbus crew, Jonathan Mensah. And from Italy, we have Emmanuel Ajimambedu, who plies his trade for Hellas Verona in the Serie A. Rob Harris is in the UK and he is um, the Associated Press Global Sports Lead. He will help us understand the dynamics of the comeback of the English Premier League and more. Gailemo Perez Castello is the La Liga delegate to Nigeria and Ghana. It is a busy week for him as the Spanish top tier returns. Tim Vickery knows the South American terrain better than anybody I have come across. They are still hoping to return to mainstream football, but there is every good reason to want to have a bit of South American football. It is always refreshing sight. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me here on The Big Comeback. Absolutely brilliant. Hey, tonight. And, um, thanks for having us. <laughs> good to have you. Um, Rob, let me start off with you. Um, Premier League is back next week. Exciting news with caution, isn't it? There's been so many fraught steps on the way to trying to get the league back underway. Uh, disputes between the teams over which venues would be used. Concerns over the health and safety of players, particularly with Britain being one of the hardest hit countries in the world for the coronavirus. But in recent weeks, the opposition has melted away. The teams have managed to come together to unite to form a plan. And as anticipated now, all games are likely to be played in the stadiums of the home teams, no neutral venues. And it all starts again next Wednesday with Aston Villa against Sheffield United. And then big one, Manchester City against Arsenal, one that has a big bearing on the title race because if Arsenal do beat City, Liverpool can then go and clinch the title on Sunday by uh, winning at Everton. A game that we do know now will take place at Goodison Park. Of course, yeah. there will be no fans at any stadiums at all. And one of the concerns was fans congregating outside the stadium still. And certainly the, the messaging has been keep away to protect the actual game going ahead inside there. But the main thing now, days ahead for the players, lots more coronavirus testing to check they are all clear of uh, COVID-19 to ensure they can play. And I'm talking about fans not being allowed to the stadium. Ajman, you definitely miss playing football. How would it be for you playing in an empty stadium? I think it would be very weird. We are not used to this kind of situations. Um, uh, we played one game against Sampdoria before the league got suspended. And it was very weird because there was nobody at the stands, you know, with the supporters. It's always made the game very beautiful. And it was very weird, but this is the situation we've been in, so we just need to abide with it and just go on and play the game. So what amount of work um, that went into getting the league back? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's been a, a tremendous effort for the whole team of La Liga. Uh, since we had to stop the competition on the 12th of March, we've been working uh, extremely hard uh, to be able to be back. We're very happy that tomorrow will be the big day. I think it's a big day for us, La Liga, but uh, for international football, I think this is something that affected all of us. And I think it's very good news for international football that La Liga is back and that other leagues can be back soon as well. And um, Tim, a lot of pressure on the league or the South American League to return, but what are the options that they are being discussed? 
Well, Paraguay is a bit later. It's uh, July the 17th okay. that Paraguay kicks off. It's the first national league that's look, looking like it's going to kick off in South America. Yeah. Um, Peru and Chile are looking at the 31st of July, with, all, with Uruguay looking at the 15th of August. The situation, as Manu has said, it's not ideal. You know, to play with no supporters, it's a bit like uh, dance music without a drummer. You, know, you lose something fundamental. But professional football, it walks that tightrope between being culture and between being business. And the business necessity of the sport means that it has to come back before ideal conditions. The problem is, are countries going to be coming back before it's safe to come back? You have to remember in South America, we're behind Europe. Um, in, in some countries, especially Brazil, which is very worrying, it, it seems as if we haven't even reached the peak of the coronavirus yet in many, in many parts of the country. Paraguay locked down very early. Uh, has had a total of 11 deaths and seems in control of the situation. So Paraguayan football, I think it's ready to return. Peru, which uh, is due to start on the 31st of July, is, is more problematic. Peru has the second highest death toll in the continent after Brazil. Um, but what they're, they're doing there, it's the neutral venue. Bring everyone to the capital city of Lima. That reduces the amount of uh, sanitization you have to do on the stadiums. It reduces the team's travelling costs, and it simplifies things. And that's something, that's an idea which I think will spread around South America because the clubs are desperate to come back. You've got to remember, with that business context, okay. you're talking about a business model in South America where many clubs were struggling to pay their wages before the shutdown. So now they're desperate to come back, and the fear is that in some countries they might come back too early. We understand that the MLS is coming back on the July 8th. I, I guess you have waited um, too long for this. Yeah, that's right. We've been uh, getting ready. We've been doing the online workouts and, and finally we, we've uh, had the chance to go outside, train at the training facility and all that. So it's an uh, exciting time to know that we're going to start very soon. And um, Adwan, you, you have been in Italy for so many years and this is clearly the the longest um, you have seen leagues being put on hold psychologically. How do you prepare yourself for next weekend? When we were in isolation for like 40 days because we played Sampdoria and unfortunately some of their players tested positive. So we needed to be isolated. It was a very, very difficult situation for us. And uh, those who we live alone here, it was very difficult. And, at that time, I don't even want, wanted to watch television because you open the television, all you see is dead bodies. It was very difficult. And right now, when we started training, uh, a lot of clubs are having a lot of injuries because we are not used to staying at home for like two and a half months without training and stuff like that. So um, gradually, for the past uh, 21 days, I think we are getting much better now. Uh, and we need to work very hard this week because Every three days we have a game. We started the games on the 20th, and we have a game on the 23rd, 29th, 26th, and stuff like that. So we're working very hard. Uh, we know it, it won't be easy for the, for the, for the players, but uh, the game needs to come back. The situation in East Italy is gradually getting much better. The restaurants are open, the airport are open for Europeans. Uh, we've been having tests every four days, all the teams in Italy, every four days, we have uh, COVID-19 tests. Even yesterday in the morning, we did one, and I think Saturday we'll have another one. So we finished the league. This is how the situation will be. And everyone is playing at this home favorite home grounds without the supporters, though. So um, we're getting much better. Uh, fitness level is getting up, uh, but we hope that after starting the league, we won't get a lot of injuries. But uh, I doubt that because Staying at home for two and a half months and starting training for only three weeks before starting the league, it will be difficult for the players. But uh, this is the game. We love it. We've been in it. And we will go all out and make the league very perfect as it has been always. In interesting points there. But um, Rob, how much of a gamble is being placed on all of this in, in terms of the EPL? Will it, will it pay off? Well, we mentioned will it pay off? One of the main reasons for actually restarting the league is financial because 
the Premier League warned that if they didn't manage to complete the season, it could cost them well over a billion pounds. So a really heavy cost for so many of the clubs. And at the heart of it is fulfilling those television contracts. And even if they do resume and complete the season, they're still looking like having to repay in rebates hundreds of millions of pounds potentially because of the disruption to the season and the changes to the product that's being delivered. But then you've got the health gamble as well. And there are players concerned that the resumption of contact games poses not only themselves at risk, but also when they return to their families as well, because of the potential that COVID-19 is still spreading within communities. And there was a reminder of this just this week. Uh, Stoke City were due to play a friendly game at Manchester United to warm up for the resumption of the season. And when they got there, there were these tests that took place and they discovered the Stoke manager, Mike O'Neill, did have COVID-19. So the game was called off and they, they all went back uh, to Stoke. But it just reminded us that although society in England is starting to open up again and sporting events are being allowed, the coronavirus is still in society and spreading so there is that need to stay alert to um to, you know to try to prevent football being something that um, spreads the virus and there will always be that overriding concerns the games regime and what we have heard from the premier league is that a team would have to fulfill a fixture even if they had only 15 players uh, so just four substitutes oh, okay. because they, they are prepared for the contingency if it there are cases within teams when the league resumes. What is the projected um, commercial loss from the non-activity? How, how much more is it costing the organization to return? Okay, so uh, of course, when it comes to the financial aspect, it's, it's very important to be able to be back. Uh, um, we, we've been able, fortunately, well, we are back tomorrow. Let's see uh, if everything goes well. Uh, the work didn't finish yet. I mean, we need to keep on working very hard to make sure that we are able to finish the season by the 19th of July, uh, the 11 match days remaining. If that's the case, uh, which we hope so and we, we believe so, um, that will mean that, of course, when it comes to television, at least we, we want, we will have been able to finish the season, which is very important. But as you know, uh, we won't probably be having uh, 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 fans for now, for sure. Who knows in the last match dates, but for now, we, we, we won't be having. So that's also a, a not a commercial, but a, yeah, a, an income impact. So if we are not able to open the stadiums for the fans uh, in the whole season, that would mean that we might be talking about maybe around 300 million euro losses uh, or less income than expected, um, not losses. Um, but it's a very good and very important that we were able to finish this if we are able to finish the season because at least when it comes to television when it comes to our uh, partnership with other kind of partners uh, we, we at least we can finish the season in that sense what's the talk among your, your your teammates what are you talking about ahead of that um, if I should say big kickoff next month Oh, it's been it's been all football now because uh, you know when we used to train from from home online workout, it was more of like hey talking about um, the other stuff that is going on. But right now that we've started training, it's more of uh, what we can do to improve um, as individuals and and as uh, uh, a team. So it's all football now, and and uh, you know it feels really good to be back. And I'm, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked um, Imanola Juman Bedu. Are you mentally prepared to get back on the field? Oh, yeah. Um, individually, I am. And, and I can see from, from the team as well, everyone is ready because uh, if, if you're not mentally ready, I don't believe you will be physically ready to go. And, uh, you know, we've seen the same uh, type of energy we, we had uh, during the start of the season. So. I believe everyone is ready mentally to, to go again. And um, Rob, will we ever get around to knowing what exactly um, works for football without looking over our shoulders in this um, era? Yeah, I mean, it's so much uncertainty over what football will actually even feel like in the stadiums and beyond. Um, I was speaking to the Bayern Munich player Joshua Kimmich uh, last week, who was saying that the lack of intensity of emotion in the stadium really affected how he played the game. You had to do more to actually get yourself 
and built up for the actual occasion itself. On the flip side, he said it actually made him less intense and emotional towards referees, so they got off easier. Uh, the question is, when will fans come back into stadiums? We are seeing some optimistic signs across Europe. Hungary had some fans in at its cup final last week, and maybe, just maybe, they'll start to work out how fans in the major leagues can come back into the stadium while maintaining some form of social distancing. As for what people see around the world, they could see very different products because some of the games are likely to have the option of artificial crowd noise being asserted over the footage in conjunction with the EA Sports, the FIFA game maker, they, they've yeah. dug up some crowd noise. So some broadcasters around the world will, will, will use that. So it might feel quite familiar then in terms of the sound, it will look very different because the stadiums are very empty. Although clubs like Brighton are, are putting cardboard cutouts of fans in place, they're able to pay 20 pounds, send their picture in and they'll still appear on the upper tier like that. But I think, as Tim was saying, the, the, you know, the big concern is actually lower down beyond the Premier League in terms of the survival of the clubs, because we do have four professional divisions in England, and without games for many of them for some months, it's very hard for them to find the money to, uh, to pay the players, to pay their staff. And if they do resume behind closed doors, there's also still no money coming from the fans. Right, so thank you very much, um, Rob, there. You're still watching the big comeback here on TV3. We'll return shortly. Please stay with us. You're welcome back to the big comeback here as we look ahead to the football leagues that are returned. And still with me um, via Zoom is um, Tim Vickery, who is an expert when it comes to South American football. We, I have um, Rob Harris, AP's global sports lead, and also Emmanuel Ajman, who needs no introduction. Um, Ajman, so um, your club president, Mauricio Setti, um, two months back, liking this whole pandemic to so Italy being at war, and um, it's definitely reflected in the team's mood at, during the extension. How is the feeling amongst your teammates? Oh, right now, the feeling is very great. Uh, everybody wanted to, to come back to, uh, to do what he, he, he liked best. Uh, the start of the trainings, we were a bit afraid. Uh, I must tell you the gospel truth. Because of how the COVID is and what we have been seeing on television. Fortunately for us, everybody is doing well. So um, for now, we are, we are good to go. Are, everyone is feeling very fresh. And um, Guillermo, give us an idea of the health and also safety protocols in place as the league returns. And also, can you speak briefly on the innovative, maybe mediums that you are making available for the fans to be able to watch the matches? Yes, yeah, so of course, uh, since the first moment from La Liga, we understand that this is way beyond football. This was individually, then with smaller groups, then groups of 10, then with the whole team, which is what is happening now. Uh, for the stadiums, all the, all, the, all the players have passed the test every possible way. And you were saying when it comes to innovations, there's different innovations from the audiovisual part, from the cameras, from the um, kind of recreating uh, like the, the atmosphere of the games, like if we had uh, public on the stadiums, we won't have, and everybody knows that, we don't pretend we have, but we want to recreate that uh, game atmosphere, so there will be innovations uh, in the sound side, in the audiovisual side, and we hope all the fans will feel like if they were uh, watching the game at the stadiums. One thing that is also coming up in the MLS, so we are hearing it may with, or it may come with a World Cup style tournament format, should mm. it happen, would you embrace yeah. it as a player? Oh yeah, um, I'm used to that format because I've played in a couple of tournaments that uh, have the same rules and all that. So I think I need to be um, one of the voices that kind of like educate the guys on, on how to approach the game, how to get your body and your mind ready for, for the next one because it, it, it's going to happen fast, four four days and you know that's what I've been I've been doing for the past uh, decade now, and 
previous tournaments that I've played in with the national team. So I believe we're going to be fine. And um, um, Tim, I want to come to you on some of the potential drawbacks that may temper the return of football across the, um, the region. We've heard how the players are being tested in Italy and the precautions yeah. that are being taken in Italy at one of the Serie A clubs. Now, the rich clubs in South America can afford to do this, but the poorer clubs, the ones who really need money fast, they don't have the structure to keep testing their players and to keep protecting their players. And this, for me, is a real worry, not only in South America, but generally, that lower down the pyramid. Uh, Rob has talked about the problems potentially for the Premier League, but the Premier League clubs, they can lose money because they, in, in the future, they have the capacity to generate income. It's the smaller clubs that don't have that capacity. Firstly, they're more dependent on the money that the supporters pay to come into the stadiums. They need that money. So they lose that, they've already lost something. Secondly, do they have the structure to protect their players and therefore protect all the families of the players? This is my worry. I think the top clubs can protect themselves. The bottom level clubs, the poorer clubs, there, there's a real crisis coming. And um, will, will La Liga or will the La Liga ever be the same post um, COVID-19? I hope so. Um... I mean, I definitely, I definitely, sorry, think so. Maybe not this season. Uh, of course, this is a weird situation for all of us. But um, first of all, I think tomorrow is the first step. And uh, I think it's, uh, as I said, it's a win, not only of La Liga, but of international football and of us all as a society. And I'm sure, uh, Little by little, we'll be, get back to normalcy and La Liga will be what it was, what it used to be. And not only La Liga, but uh, international football. Tim, will the future ever make up for the losses that we've seen in the past few months? I know that football clearly took a back seat, which is rightly so. Yeah, um, the, the, well, the problem is, can the small clubs survive? The bigger <laughs> clubs can make it up in the long run. When they, uh, the, 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 the bigger clubs from the massive leagues in Europe their market is global. They're selling their product globally. They can take a hit. They can make it up. The smaller clubs can't. And that, that's the big worry for the future of football. Can, can I push you a bit, Gemmo? Is it going to be um, Barcelona's title or Real Madrid? Huh. <laughs> we will see. You know, it's extremely tight. It's only two points difference between the two of them. We had recently a Clasico before the lockdown. Um, Real Madrid won that game. They went ahead on the, on the table. The game after they lost against Betis, so now Barcelona is, is ahead and now we have the lockdown. It's 11 match days to go. There's a huge fight, you know, for the, for the championship, but also for the European positions, for the relegation zone. Everything is super tight and only, well, and it's still 11 match days to go, but only in one and a half month. So we'll be having football actually every single day from tomorrow to the 19th of July. Every single day we'll be having La Liga games. So I, it's going to be super exciting and, and let's see what happens. And um, Ajwan, you're talking to your teammate. You had a bit of worry when you started training. But now, most importantly, football is coming back. And I'm sure that um, what, what, what is the discussion among you and, and, and the players? Are you hoping to give it your best shot? Yeah, the, before the league starts, started, uh, we have a meeting with our server. It's a new club from Serie B to Serie A, and we know how the Italian Serie A history is. Every team who comes from the Serie B, the three teams, every year, one or two of the, that club goes down. So we had a that we need to do our best and save and be saved early as possible because we have a very tough games ahead of us and because of how the, the season has gone. So um, we just we're just trying to do our best right now so that we'll be fit for the games. Just we'll do our best to get 40 points to be saved in the league. And if after we can do some miracle and go to Europa or whatever, then that is a, that is a plus for us. But right now, our concentration is on, we are concentrating on the games to be saved in the league. That is the main ambition of, of we the footballers. And so everybody needs to work very hard. Uh, we know the weather is very hot as well. 
Yeah. And mostly we play some of the games around like seven and nine in the night. So it will be a bit okay. So our ambition is just to save in the league and everybody is, is points for that. But right now. And um, Jonathan, I'm, I'm giving you the last words here on the big comeback. And it's the same question I asked um, Costello. That is, will the MLS be the same for you as a player? I know from the management side, you might not be um, in the know of that and also mm -hmm. the technical side. But will the MLS be the same when, when it comes back? Um, obviously, there won't be fans. There won't be... Uh, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of uh, restrictions and, and we know that it's going to happen because of the situation globally. And, uh, you know, we need to keep uh, uh, keep the discipline of, of what we've been asked by the medical staff. And I think it's, uh, it's going to be fine, but at the same time, it's not going to be the same. But, you know, we will do our best and enjoy the game as much as we can. Jonathan, thank you very much. And gentlemen, thank you very much for your time here on the big comeback. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. It was an absolute delight. And to Ajman and also Jonathan, we wish you the well as you return to the field soon. Tim and Rob, always an honor to do this with you guys. And many thanks to Guillermo Perez Castello, the La Liga delegate to Ghana and Nigeria. And to you who made time to watch, thank you. Let's do this again sometime. Remember to stay safe and continue to spread love. My name is Juliet Bewa. Good night.